Just this idea that religion's a crutch, that it's for weak people, that, that uh, strong people don't need religion, they just stand up on their own. Yeah, until they get multiple sclerosis. You know, until they need, until they're incapacitated and they need people around them to take care of them. I mean, we're constantly in need. We're in need in every instant. Our hearts could stop at any instant. I mean, I had a dear friend who literally just collapsed the other day and crushed his skull. He had to have m multiple surgeries and metal plates put into his head. He was a perfectly healthy person, a mountain climber, a young, relatively young man, really strong, but he, he collapsed. And he said it was like a great wake-up call for him, even though he was already a devout Muslim, but he was like, I felt like God was really sending me a huge message. I need to change my life. I need to get better. That's an appropriate response to tribulation. Instead of getting angry, and why are you doing this to me? Because there's all these people. That's their attitude. Why are you doing this to me? Allah, there's no why for Allah. لا يسروا عما يفعل. لا يسروا عما يفعل. He's not asked about what he does. He's not asked about what he does. But you will be asked. They will be asked about what they're doing. وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَى شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّ مَعَكُمْ إِنَّ مَا نَحْنُ مُسْتَهْزِئُونَ إِنَّ مَعَكُمْ إِنَّ مَا نَحْنُ مُسْتَهْزِئُونَ And when they encounter those who believe, they say, we believe. But when they are alone with their obsessions, and that's very interesting, خَلَوْا إِلَى شَيَاطِينِهِمْ You know, it's خَلْوَة is to be alone. And, and one of the things that Dr. Cleary really he had a great knowledge of uh, the, the, the mind and wrote many books on meditation and on the mind. Um, so he really understood the nature of obsessions, obsessive compulsive thoughts of these type of things, that these can really, really wreak havoc on people. And, and so shayateen are like obsessions. There's, there, 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 there's this constant waswasa that goes on. Um, and they say, we're with you in the So we're with you. We're with you. Uh, we're just mocking them. The mustahzi'in all had terrible outcomes. This does not mean that God. So Allah does not do istahza in this way. This is, this is um, a type of rhetorical. Uh, device in which it's saying that they're going to get what they're doing. So, Allah yastahzi'u bihim wa yamudduhum fi tabiyanihim ya'mahun. And amplifying their outrages as they wander astray. Ula'ika alladhina ashtaru wa dharalata bil huda fa ma rabihat tijaratuhum wa ma kanu muhtadeen. They are the ones who have bartered guidance for error. So they, they traded uh, guidance for error. They, they, they gave up their guidance for this balala. فَمَا رَبِحَتْ تِجَارَتُهُمْ This is a beautiful expression that the Prophet ﷺ used when Suhaib al-Rumi made his famous hijrah. And Suhaib, they wouldn't let him leave because he had been, he's called a Rumi. There's a khilaf about um, what his actual lineage was, but um, he grew up amongst the Byzantines, although he wa had Arab lineage. So, but they said, you came to us a foreigner and you became wealthy here. We're not gonna let you leave without your wealth. So he gave up all, he just said, you can have it all. I just wanna go be with the Prophet So when he got to Medina, without telling the Prophet what he did, because the angel told the Prophet what he did, he said, Rabbi tijaratuka ya Abba Yahya. Your tijara was profitable because he gave up all of his dunya for akhirah. And these people do the very opposite of that. Methrhum ka methr il ladi istawqada nara, ramma ada at ma hawlahu dahab Allahu bi nurihim wa tarakahum fi dhurumat il la yubusirun. They are like, what they are like is one who lit a fire. And when it illumined everything around, 
God took their light and left them in darkness unseeing. So one of the things about life is that people do have insights and they do have periods. Uh, Winston Churchill famously said, everybody stumbles onto the truth at least once in their life. And the vast majority of people simply get up, brush themselves off and carry on. And I think that he was really talking about himself because apparently, and there was an article in The Guardian about um, some of his, uh, his uh, diaries um, and some correspondence between family members. He actually considered becoming Muslim at one time. And uh, he was convinced by his family that it would destroy his political career if he did. Uh, and that was, that was published in The Guardian magazine. You can look that up, so. But um, people do make dunyawi choices. Like, choosing to become a Muslim is choosing right now in, in our current time to become part of an oppressed minority, really. Um, so, although some people seem to be happy to do that as well. Um, but it's, uh, nobody said it was going to be easy. And Allah promises with, that, with the hardship ease. So there's great difficulties uh, in becoming Muslim at a time when the Muslim world is so beleaguered and the Muslims don't look particularly uh, like they're flourishing as a community. I think, inshallah, there's a greater reward than when they're successful. Because a lot of people want to become Americans or Europeans because of their success. I once met a Muslim who actually left Islam and became a Mormon. And, and I asked him why he did that, amazing. And he said, he's, he looked to the most successful community and he just wanted to be successful. He actually came back to Islam, thank goodness. But he literally told me he became a Mormon because he wanted to be successful. So success with Allah or success with mammon, I mean, you choose. It doesn't mean they're mutually exclusive. One of the reasons uh, Abd rahman ibn Auf, the Prophet saw him entering paradise crawling was because he, he was so engaged in the world, even though it was for other worldly means, but he was so engaged in the world uh, as a, a merchant. Um, so there's no reason why you can't be a successful merchant and a Muslim. In fact, the Prophet was the most successful merchant. So uh, there's, and, and there's, it's good to be successful in your worldly endeavors. But if you're not, then you, it's either, there, there are a couple different possibilities. One, you're not following the proper sunan of success, which is very often, I mean, Dr. Cleary told me once that there's a year in, um, in, in uh, China where the Buddhists call it the year that grace descended because Buddhism suddenly had this incredible expansion during that year. And he said it was actually the year that the monks got organized. <laughs> so, so it's not mutually exclusive. But people often, I mean, Muslims are often really poor at organization and execution. I mean, I know Muslims that work at, at the top levels at like Google or Facebook or, but then they're on the mosque board and they run the board. It's like they're not using any of the skill sets that they learn uh, in these other places, just basic managerial skill sets of how to run things well, how to get things done properly. I mean, these are all things that Muslims should be uh, foremost at because in Allah Abdi Amira Amaran and Yutkinahu. Allah loves a servant, should he do a thing, he does it with excellence. In Allah al Abdi Muhtarif. Allah loves a, a, a servant, ihtirafiyah in modern Arabic because professionalism. So a modern translation of that could be, Allah loves a professional servant, a servant who does things with, with excellence, with, with hirfa, with craft, with skill, a skilled servant.